I'm really, really pumped about this book, everyone. So I want to get real close, like we're back in kindergarten. For those of you who felt tingles ASMR back then, well, maybe this is too close. I tried to get the lighting, I'm uh, tweaking with the lighting, so phew, cosmic. So, seven ways to destroy a planet like Earth. So, um, this just seemed like a nice book to drift off to, to, uh, let our imaginations loose. I guess that's Partially what I get out of ASMR is, uh, it's like either way your imagination's gonna go wild, so why not give it something to, uh, something real majestic, grand and mysterious and a little bit detached and removed from your everyday troubles uh, to worry about and mull over as you go to sleep. which I'll try not to spend too much time on. And then we have an asteroid hit and all the different catastrophes that could happen. We have the asteroid hit, a comet swarm collision, and then we could get thrown out of the solar system. And then of course a supernova could hit a, an Earth-like planet. We could be swallowed by a black hole. And, uh, sorry, let me make sure this is still in the... There, it's still in the frame there. And then, uh, our sun could die, and it will, eventually, but... I think not before, for another four billion years, is it? Um... Of course, we could get invaded by um, predatory aliens. All right, so.
history and psychology and deep, deep time, deep history. That's a cool concept. The more I realize we are incredibly adaptive, incredibly versatile, incredibly intelligent, and capable species, creatures, complex organisms, complex should uh, really give ourselves more credit for all these events like that that we have overcome, triumphed over, and squeaked through, squeaked by. So, um, yeah, just think of how many close calls there must have been, or maybe how many old civilizations there have been that were completely wiped out. So, anyways, just keep that in mind. Uh, give our ancestors a pat on the back as we, uh, we go through possible scenarios and probable, some probable extinction events, extinction level events that they might have squeaked by, squeaked out of not just our ancestors directly in terms of the same species, but all the way back, taken further and further back. If you believe in the scientific line of thought and that some of these people out there, anthropologists, psychologists, geologists, um, evolutionary biologists, if you think that they're not wasting their time and making up all these things that they're studying, then you have to take the idea that we in our neurological structures as well that make us up have adapted and evolved from kind of concentrically on top of a core um, function occur a core pre perceptory cognitive structures things that that have helped our ancestors all the way back to ocean dwelling amoebas amoebas I don't know and then the things that crawled onto the land than the lizards that we could be directly connected to. And it's so amazing to think that. And just, um, yeah, I don't know, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. But for me, that's... It's, um, it's very meaningful to view my life in terms of a bigger picture. can detect different sized planets orbiting distant stars by seeing the stars wobble as the orbiting planets pull on them or by watching light from a distant star dim as the planet passes by but uh, we already talked about that in the uh, Tabby's Stars two part episode I guess so recently become come to understand that the universe is is um, it's very prolific it's 
spinning out large numbers of planets, including one like our, ones like our Earth. In the Milky Way galaxy alone, there may be more than 20 billion Earths. And the Milky Way is just one of 200, more than 225. with me if you don't mind. Okay. God, props to all the uh, elementary school teachers out there who have the art of holding a book like this for 20 minutes at a time. Mastered. It's not, it's not easy. <laughs> so this is a really cool part. I like so not only is the universe big, it's a marvelously chaotic place, full of collisions, explosions, and searing blasts of radiation from dying stars. New stars and planets are born as older ones cease and slip. Wherever astronomers look with their telescopes, chaos reigns. Life, death, and change are ongoing events in the universe. What happens to planets like Earth is subject to chance and numerous possible outcomes. Some are favorable to life and others are not so much. Big changes occur over extremely long periods of time. And others like this supernova here can happen quite abruptly. The Earth is unlike any other planet in our solar system. It's a world rich with independent, interdependent life in every imaginable place. Single-celled organisms can be found inside rocks buried 12 miles underground or 19 kilometers. God, 12 miles underground. Bizarre forms of life Bizarre forms of life inhabit in the seas, in the oceans, lakes, and rivers. Earth's rocky continents are vibrant with life, and so its atmosphere is too. Five miles above the surface, bacteria. Life appeared after it cooled down enough for oceans to form. And life began with simple forms and then moved on to more complex, of course.
the most extreme of these uh, five major mass extinctions that have happened was the Permian extinction 252 million years ago and that wiped out 96% of all life so we are one of the 4% that uh, survived it to start over slowly changing environmental conditions as well such as ice and massive volcanic eruptions or explosive events such as asteroids can all devastate the world like ours. What might some of these startling dramatic, dramatic events look like if they happened today? Yeah. So, an asteroid hit on February 13th, 2014. Dawn. The people of I gotta make sure I'm still in frame here. See this big asteroid right here. The people of Chelya Chelyabinsk Oblast in the southern Ural region of Russia were just starting their morning, drinking coffee, driving to work, getting ready for a new school day. And suddenly a brilliant fireball streaked across the sky. It shone 30 times brighter than the sun and left a long trail of smoke and dust behind it. Then there was a deafening blast, a deafening blast that shattered windows. A shock wave smashed into the ground, injuring close to 1,500 people. I remember this off the dash cam. You can see, that's pretty amazing. Damaging some 7,000 buildings. And then panic broke out. It almost resembled a war zone. You know, if, if we hadn't have uh, caught this on camera. And people even said it smelled like gunpowder. So they think that the, um, maybe I'll, I'll move this camera down a little bit here. There we go, okay. So, um, they said the, the fireball that hit Chelyabinsk Oblast was a chunk of rock about 65 feet wide. This was the crux. This is the uh, crucial point is that it was traveling 40,000 miles an hour. Or uh, 64,000 kilometers an hour, but not like it really matters to uh, the conversion at this point. At that speed, it released the explosive equivalent of, of uh, 500,000 tons. That's almost 30 times as much as the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. That's fantastic. Wow. Like, literally fantastic. Well, maybe that's the bad, not the best word. But, uh, so the idea that rocks from outer space can build Earth is nothing new. Every day, from uh, anywhere from 5 to 30 tons, no, to 300 tons of space rocks and metal fragments hit our atmosphere, 
leaving white streaking trails. The result is that Earth continually gets heavier, about 40,000 tons heavier, or the equivalent of two aircraft carriers every year. Every year, wow, that's... want to uh, want to see some of the debris coming in next time you're away from the city lights at night lie back on the ground and just look up wow yeah as your eyes get adjusted to the darkness you may suddenly see a flash of light and there it is, a space rock hitting the Earth's upper atmosphere and flaming across the sky as a meteorite. As spectacular as meteorites might be, these are not objects. These aren't the ones we need to worry about. The space rocks that do real damage, called asteroids, are the leftover building materials from when our uh, early solar system, from when it formed 4.5 billion years ago. Most asteroids are found in an area between Mars and Jupiter called the asteroid, asteroid belt. However, thousands of rogue asteroids called near-Earth objects They zip past the Earth all the time. Some even pass between the Earth and the Moon. I know one did a couple years back. The realization that large asteroids may have affected life on Earth is relatively new. 65 million years ago. This sounds like a really long time, but um, in the history of Earth, ge geologically, it's not that. Suddenly there were no more bellowing dinosaurs. There were no more giant dragonflies or uh, delicate sea creatures that we study as fossils today. The earth was wiped clean of 70% of its life. And scientists had many theories as to why this happened, but they had no proof until 1980. Paleontologists searching for fossils north of Rome in Italy discovered something quite remarkable. Digging along a rocky hillside, they realized that all the dinosaur fossils had stopped when it reached a one inch thick layer of gray colored clay sediment. Samples were brought into the laboratory and revealed the layer mostly was made up of an element called iridium. Where did it come from? And why was this same layer found all over Earth? Suddenly it all became clear. Iridium is extremely rare on Earth. But many asteroids actually contain large amounts of it. And this layer found in Italy 
came from a mountain-sized asteroid striking Earth 66 million years ago. But where did it? Where did it hit? So geologists searching for oil off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico had the answer. They had the answer. Two years earlier, they had discovered an underwater crater 110 miles wide. And they found it was 12 miles deep. 12 times deeper than the Grand Canyon. It was the largest confirmed impact crater on Earth. This is where the asteroid that ended the age of dinosaurs hit. Blocking sunlight, it threw dust into the atmosphere, changed, it changed the global climate. Today we call it the KT event, named for the Cretaceous, ter the Cretaceous tertiary period that marks the disappearance of the dinosaurs and the emergence of large animals. Scientists labeled the Cretaceous period K because of its German spelling. Now you're probably wondering what are the chances an asteroid this size or bigger could hit Earth again? And uh, of course, if it did, what would happen? And here we have another pretty poorly designed art artistic representation. I never thought CGI could look so bad in print. But it's it's not good. The asteroid that sent the dinosaurs on their way measured 3 to 10 miles in diameter. And this may seem large, but in comparison to other asteroids in the belt, it's not. When an asteroid collision occurs, it's not the explosion that creates all the damage. It's the fires, the dust, the burning debris raining down after the initial blast. Imagine a, a scene. Maybe it's early morning in a prehistoric neighborhood on the banks of a shallow lake. A small herd of apatosaurus. Apatosaurus. There we go. We're going to say that. Majestically dip their heads underwater, pulling up tasty plant morsels from the muddy bottom. On the shoreline, a stegosaurus mother watches over her newborn baby while the pterodactyl circles lazily overhead. But suddenly a sky, the sky flashes blindingly white, flames and billowing black smoke follow, engulfing the horizon and racing outward. Within seconds, the sky turns an eerie glowing red. A shockwave traveling more than 300 miles an hour, or 480 kilometers. Every hour, 480 kilometers an hour. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Falling trees burst into flame. Rocks and soil ejected by the blast fall back on the ground, burying the landscape under tons of mud. Wow, God. Fireballs rain down from the sky, 
Anything living caught above ground is incinerated. Tidal waves 150 feet tall, 46 meters high, flood the landscape, sweeping rocks, boulders, trees along with them. Smoke and dust choke the skies, turning them pitch black. Even bright sunlight does not reach the ground again for months. So, plants using photosynthesis die. Acid rain falls silently to the ground, killing any remaining plants struggling to survive. It's freezing temperatures then are the norm for the next three years. Life on Earth is now forever changed. Gone are the majestic dinosaur monsters of the seas and featherless flying reptiles. Remains is a slowly recovering world that soon will have different life on it. So what are the chances this could happen to us? Luckily they're slim. On average, big asteroids like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago hit every once in a hundred million years. That's not to say that something couldn't suddenly surprise us. A critical role some astronomers play today is the detection of asteroids long before they get here, so that something might be done to prevent any collision. For example, if we had a few years to respond, we might send a robotic spacecraft to gently nudge the asteroid on another course so it would miss Earth completely. And for the past 16 years, NASA has been monitoring skies, looking for asteroids larger than about half a mile. So, uh, so far they've found 90 of these big objects, but many more appear to be lurking out there undetected. Researchers have been studying asteroid 1950 DA. It appears that this large asteroid might be on a collision course with Earth. And it potentially has the capability of wiping out all of us. If it hits on March 16th, 2880. We have about 800 years to go. The chances are right. Chances right now are 1 in 300 that it will hit us. Of course, by 864 years from now, we should have technologies to protect our planet. However, the Earth has been hit many times in the past, and it will get hit in the future. So if a rogue asteroid approaching Earth from the direction of the sun catches us by surprise, watch out. Okay. Alright, so that's, that's it.
as always, thanks for watching, and hope you get a nice, deep, restful sleep, knowing that we have people out there watching the Earth, guarding it against asteroids, or at least being able to spot them, so we can do something about it. Sleep well, as always, guys, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.